God today and the same God tomorrow. Help me see the victory you already see. Let my faith be today what it will be tomorrow.
Come on, let's call on his name right now. Lord, we call on your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We call on your name, Jesus. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All for the glory of the Lord. Everything that we do is for his glory. Amen. What is the purpose of the building? What is the purpose of our worship? What is the purpose of our hand claps? What is the purpose for us lifting our voice? What is the purpose of telling anyone about church or about the Lord? Amen. It's that he might receive the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let's give him praise right now for his glory. For your glory, Lord. For your glory, Lord. For your glory, O oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Let all that we say or do, everything that we do, be for the glory of the Lord. Let us go to the Lord in prayer tonight for our nation and those that are serving us. We want to continue to hold them in prayer and in our thoughts. Our missionary, the finest of the wheat, these folks have given themselves to the ministry of spreading the gospel overseas, missionaries to Thailand, and we want the Lord to bless them and to multiply their efforts there and what they're doing and to send laborers into the harvest. The only prayer request that Jesus ever gave was pray you therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers. Amen. And this brother and sister have labored for many, many years, but they need some co-laborers to come along and to be with them. I know that this work has been blessed but we want them to see and receive that help that is needed. Let's take before the Lord tonight these names that have been given by the lions, Brother Bobby Smith, Sister Cynthia Gardner. These three, of course, are shut-ins that have been a part of our church for a number of years. Yvonne Williamson, Sister Stacy's mother, amen. She has also been uh, through some health issues of late, asked God, give strength to Sister Stacy first of all in helping mom during this time but also to touch her. Sister Donna tonight we want to pray for her. Katie uh, Eagleson, Tracy Thomas, the Weeks family Sister Lisa, Shelby Conrad all of these names we bring before you tonight to call out to the Lord in prayer we firmly believe that our God is a healer our God is interested in every condition. We are thankful tonight that two that have been on that list are in service tonight. Amen. We're grateful for that. Amen. Brother Dickie Stout coded completely. And uh, he's here only because of the grace and the mercy of God and God helping the medical staff in that night. And then uh, we look here at Scooter Smith tonight. He ought to be in a grave somewhere. Head on collision. How fast was you going, brother? Do you remember? So you have a head on collision. You're doing 77 and the other vehicle doing 100 miles per hour. And here he is. Amen. He's, he's lost a little weight. Didn't, didn't make you any better looking, brother, but here you are. You're in church tonight. We're thankful, amen, that the Lord's hand is a protector. Amen? Amen. amen. Ain't God good? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Let's go to the Lord right now. If you need prayer for your body, you're welcome to come to the front at this time. We will lay hands on you and pray over you tonight for any need that you have, and the Lord will touch you. Let's join together right now and calling these names out before the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you tonight. You're knowing every need that has been given and is associated tonight. I'm asking and I'm believing right now in the name of Jesus for the touch of your hand, O oh Lord, tonight in Jesus' name.
God, we anoint with oil tonight, and you know the condition of my sister. God, you already have it worked out. You already know the end from the beginning. God, you know all. Praise God. You may be seated. Good to see each and every in the house of the Lord tonight. Brother Dan, before I get started, you start your rounds. Brother Dan's going to be coming around tonight to receive our tithes and offerings. I always forget him, but he is always faithful. Praise God. Praise God. Good to be in the house of the Lord tonight, is it not? If you're a first-time visitor here, we'd like to welcome you. Hopefully somebody's shaking your hand. If not, just hang on. I'll get you after church. Don't go nowhere. Uh, if you would, drop by the hostess desk, fill out a visitor information card. We have a free gift for you. If you announce us to remember, this coming Sunday, Brother Greg Albritton will be back with us. Was that not good this past Sunday? Woo! Make me almost want to go back and do it again. No, no, we'll just catch it this Sunday. So show up, bring somebody. If you got somebody that needs something from the Lord, bring them. I believe he can touch them. Praise God. All right, Friends and Family Day, March 24th, 10 o'clock. Put this on your calendar, 10 o'clock, Friends and Family Day. That's a good day to buy some. If you got a friend, if you got some family, bring them. If you don't have a friend, find somebody you want to be a friend and bring them. Because we're going to have a good time around here that Sunday. Listen to this. We're going to have a petting zoo. I don't know about much about petting, but I like this next part. Gumbo. Gumbo. Brother, I mean, you feel it? I feel it. Ooh. I got a little doodad right there. An egg hunt and a cake auction. I am so excited about what God has going on in these last days. Are you? Has anybody had a rough day today? See if I can give my sound people, uh, my, my uh, video people, uh, just a, a warning. Psalms 124, if you please. Have you had a rough day? Has anybody had? I had a rough day. We've been fighting things, you know, just, it, it's always bad. It, but, you know, some days it just seems rougher than others. But Psalms 124 said it like this if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, don't worry about today. God is on your side. Don't worry about what may come your way. God is on your side. David said, if it had not been for the Lord, I would have had done, been done in. But God is on your side. Woo! That excites me. I am so excited. Continue the worship of the Lord tonight with our prayer team before Brother Stent comes to bring the word.
Thank you for the cross, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Look forward to Brother Albritton being with us again this weekend. And uh, yes, he was powerful in ministry this last Sunday. And I know it was time change Sunday and we battled with that somewhat. But the power of the message was still there grateful for that. Look forward to his being with us again. Amen. I also want to give you just a bit of good news as well. We took up our temple offering this last Sunday, and I know that you probably want to know the results of that. We're not totally done. This coming Sunday, I'm going to give an opportunity for our children that have been raising money. We gave these little kids five dollars Asked them to see what they could do with it in multiplying it. And you're going to be shocked at how much money some of these little kids have raised. And, of course, I know that some of you, are they're emptying your pockets. I felt like after service one night, after about three of them had come through, it felt like they had picked me up by the ankles and shook me real hard. And uh, said, you still got a few pieces of change in your pocket. You still got a dollar bill hid somewhere. I want it. <laughs> That's kind of the way I felt. But they're excited about it, and uh, they know what these square feet are costing, and they've got a goal of how many square feet they're going to raise money for. So adults, better get with the program. But this past Sunday, thanks be to the Lord, what we know, and there's still some other commitments were given, but 21368 was what was given in an offering this last Sunday. To God be the glory. Go ahead and clap your hands and give God praise. Amen. I told you that whatever, we were going to thank God for it. If it was $1,000, if it was $500, we're going to do this. And I firmly believe that God is going to provide all the dollars needed. And when we move across the street, I'm going to be mighty surprised if we don't move over there having known that we are debt-free when we go in that. I really feel like that that's entirely within our reach to do so. Praise God. I have something tonight that I want to open up to you in the Word of the Lord. I feel like the Lord has dealt with me extensively in my spirit in prayer on this passage and several passages of Scripture that I will read for you tonight. But Matthew chapter 5 beginning with verse 1, and I'm going to read from the, the New International Version, and uh, you will probably be reading from the King James text, but so you'll see just a slight difference in the wording that I give is because I'm reading from the New International Version for the sake of clarity. After Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed. The key verse that I'm focused on is verse 3. Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? What I want to speak to you on tonight is 
I'm going to end it, and you'll understand why the title when I end this tonight. But I want to end it with a statement, that thy faith fail not. That thy faith fail not. I want to take you tonight, if I may, for the next few moments from doubt to assurance. I want to lead you in the scripture from a, a position of doubting to a position of assurance. And everybody said amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Thank you for standing in honor to the reading of the word of the Lord tonight. Amen. My spirit was somewhat troubled last night. I didn't rest as well as most times that I do, I was awakened several different times with, a, with these thoughts in my mind, and, and I kept on as if I was hearing the Lord uh, speak unto an apostle, saying, I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And because of that, it began to go deeper into my spirit, and I began to open up the scripture tried to see for a connection point of what the Lord was trying to speak to me. And I, I do know some of the reasoning and the purpose of why I felt the Lord speaking to me. But I know that the Lord allows me many times to, to be troubled or to feel things because only as I feel them do I begin to become empathetic, sensitive, to the needs of people and what they're presently going through. We all are living in a world right now that there is the ever-present uh, potential for doubts to rise and surface in our mind. And you don't have to be very perceptive in life to figure out that there is a lot of things going on in the world right now that creates a questioning and a doubt. Today, I was at an auto repair place here in town, and there was a group of men uh, that were sitting around, and one lady, and she kept everything uh, right for me. She wouldn't let them get speaking language that was not pure for the preacher to hear. And when one of them would slip and say something, she was, shh, and the preacher's here. you got to talk right and I don't know who she was but I liked her real quick because she was looking out for me but every child of God every one of us who serves the Lord at some time or another in your life you're going to enter into a state of doubt while traveling down through the the rivers of your spiritual Christian experience you're going to come through these rivers and there's going to be times that there's a curve and then out of the curve as you come, there's a sandbar. How many have ever went up and done a, the canoe, the canoe and down the river? You know what I'm talking about. When I went the first time, it was a year of drought and the Wiscachetta uh, was definitely, it wasn't the time to do it the sandbars and the trees and we had to get out and we had to pull the canoe over all that stuff and what started out to be fun very quickly began to be something that we dreaded and that's kind of the way our living for God is things can be moving along quite well we're rowing and paddling our little boat and going down the stream and then all of a sudden there begins to be a straight section that is ended by a curvature and then sandbars and all of the obstacles that are in the way. Amen. Just check and see if y'all still awake tonight. Amen. We are human. Every one of us are human. And it is a characteristic of humanity for there to be doubts that surface from time to time and Ideally, doubt does not exist in, in the land of faith. Doubts are not able to live there. But realistically, every one of us is sitting on a piece of real estate that from time to time, there's going to be doubts that move on to where we're at. Now, 
I will hasten to tell you that your doubt helps to establish your faith. You may not understand that. You may not see that. You may not want to embrace that. But the process of going from doubt to assurance, this process of wrestling with God, this process of wrestling with the Scriptures, they are, this is an essentiality of our lives that we must go through if we're going to grow spiritually. Many times, though, people coming through a, a, a section or a zone of doubt want to give up. And I will tell you that the time that I took that little canoe ride, if it would have been a way and a place to get out and quit, I would have. Because that wasn't no fun. It was hot. I was sweaty. The sand and everything that goes with that, that, that was not fun. It was not refreshing like they promised me it was going to be. And uh, there wasn't no place to quit, though. I had no choice but to battle and to keep going to find the place where they would pick us all up and take us back to our, our vehicles. And so I had to struggle with it. And so it is in your walk with God, there are going to be some times that you're going to not feel quite as strong as you felt in times past. There's going to be the grappling with scriptures. And you're going to question about who is saved and who is lost. You, you know what you've been taught. You know what you, you receive through Bible study of what the Bible plan of salvation is. But when you look in the world, I don't know how many Buddhists there are. I don't know how many are worshiping at the temple of a thousand gods in Japan. I don't know how many Muslims there are in the world. I don't know how many Mormons there are in the world. I don't know how many Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, uh, Lutheran, Unitarian Church, Pentecostals of all stripes and breeds, and there are many of them, just like there are many different forms of the Baptist church as well. And when you look at the Word of God, and it seems so clear to you when you hungrily begin to seek after it, and you received your revelation of who God is, and you were baptized in the only saving name, you saw it, you felt it, grip on it, and you recognize why you've done what you've done. But after you've served God for a while, you come up against a sandbar of opposition and fallen trees that are in your way that have questions you don't know how to answer. And there is no answer for some questions. The Bible teaches us to avoid foolish and vain babblings. They, they gender strife. They lead us in a way that will cause us to fall off the abyss and we won't, we'll ultimately not even know what is right, what is wrong. You wrestle with the scriptures that shows baptism in the name of Jesus, that that is the part of the New Testament plan of salvation, but somebody in your family was never baptized never received the Holy Ghost. And you have to grapple with that, struggle with it. I have in my family, the family tree, if I were to describe it, I would tell you that there was one branch that was strong Catholicism. In fact, one was a priest. And uh, some others were of the Church of Christ and many of the Methodist Church. And so out of this differing backgrounds, my grandfather and grandmother, they began to grapple with truth and hunger for God. And where they were at, they were not really going to church. And a miraculous healing brought them the revelation of the power of the name of Jesus. My grandmother had become deaf and her ears were healed. That was on one side. On the other side, my other grandparents, 
Uh, my grandmother came from a godly family that was a form of Pentecost, but did not know the revelation of the oneness of God. She was in a, in a branch that lived and went strongly with the Trinitarian doctrine. But God gave her a divine revelation about who Jesus was. And she went to her grave embracing it and believing it while all of the rest of her brothers and sisters and family thought that she had fallen off the end of the world. She had to grapple with that. That was a struggle. That was something hard to do. And there was a lot of suffering there. You're going to be challenged by... Scripture that speaks about holiness and modesty. It's going to come. There's going to be a sandbar. There's going to be trees that have fallen in your way that are going to cause you to wonder, does it really take all of that to be pleasing unto God? Is it really there? Well, there's some things that are the Bible is silent on, and where it's silent, I do my best to remain silent in that area as well. I may have opinions. I may have a thought uh, because of some things are by tradition. And all traditions are not bad. Some traditions are good. They're handed to us from our Father. And not all Bible or, or traditions of the church are wrong. Every church has a tradition of some form. No matter the church. Everyone does. And we do also. Not all tradition is bad. We have a strong, strong tradition about some things, but there is also Bible that we live and teach and preach. And you're going to come headlong into it and faced with it as you begin to live and you begin to come in contact with others. And if we are not bound to the Word of God, and the revelation that God has given us, we will very likely, because of our humanity and not liking to deal with the doubts, the, le the path of least resistance becomes the way. But there is still a fact that the Word of God says that holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Now what is holiness? Holiness, brothers and sisters, is not just a dress code. The dress code is a result of holiness in the heart. When I become pure and holy in my heart with God, there will be convictions that begin to surface, that begin to come out, and I'll be reading the Word of God, and I'll say, aha, that's why that Scripture is in there. It won't be that if, if all we do is just take the Word to win an argument, that's not holiness, brothers and sisters. That's not what God's called us to do. We're not using this book as just an instrument to defeat someone else who has a different viewpoint. But holiness in seeking after God. The apostles said we, we felt it right in the Holy Ghost. In praying together, they came to a consensus and an agreement. The Holy Ghost inspired them. And they agreed to it. Well, many of the things that we hold dear today, the United Pentecostal Church is not that old in the grand scheme of things. It in and of itself is not the only boat to be in to be saved. That's, that's not going to save you just because you say, I go to United Pentecostal Church. I think that it is the greatest Thing going in the apostolic movement and I know of many other organizations and those that gather and meet that preach and teach very similar to what we preach and teach. So just to say because I've got a fellowship card in my pocket and because you go to a church that has a UPCI pastor and a name UPCI on the sign that that is the only way to heaven. Let me just break the news to you. There are literally hundreds of independent churches across this nation that are very, very much bound by the teachings of 
Jesus' name is the only way to be saved. You must be baptized in the name. You must be filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of tongues. And you must practice holiness and modesty of dress, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. There are many independents that are, do not want to be a part of the United Pentecostal Church. And I believe when we get to heaven, we're going to see many of those precious brothers and sisters. I have chosen... I feel strongly the relationship to the United Pentecostal Church organization because it is a united effort to spread the gospel. That's the purpose of the ministerial fellowship and the brethren of the United Pentecostal Church. Uh, when I was young, there was the Apostolic Ministers Fellowship. And there are those, some in our area, that were very much uh, tied to that. Today... There is another uh, group that's called the WPF, and uh, they are good brethren. They, have, they had a disagreement with us. They chose to pull out and form another fellowship and organization. And, you know, I'm, they're not against us, so I'm not going to fight them. Anything that's not of God is not going to last. If it's of God, it's going to last. Whatever is formed around the foot of the cross can last. But now, if it's something that's formed by division, to divide and to bring dissension in the body, that's not around the cross. That is not going to bode well. So, if you're going, you're going to be challenged by Scripture that speaks about holiness and modesty. And uh, you're going to question things. And... You know, because so much about holiness is involving our ladies. The men can just sit back and kind of grin and nod their head. Let me just tell you something, brother. If we get down to the nitty-gritty tax of things, and we talk about how men are to lift up holy hands and their eyes, and their, their lips, there are differing battles that men have than women have. And so, therefore, holiness to be perfected is also for the men as well. There is no clearly defined scripture that says that if a man wears a pair of short pants to his knees or thereabout, that he's going to go to hell. There's no scripture that states that. But we have traditionally practiced in the Pentecostal movement, as men, we wear long pants. That's just way we do it and uh, you say well am I going to hell if I don't no I'm not going to preach you into hell but I do know this there are spirits that get attached to certain things that are reflectant of what I would call a root of rebellion now there are some clearly defined things that we must adhere to we don't look at the wine when it's moved within itself it's red in the glass so we do not drink alcohol that would cause one to become drunk. We firmly stand on that. There is also the, the prohibition of anything that would destroy the temple of the Holy Ghost. So smoking, tobacco products is something that we clearly refrain from because the Surgeon General has determined that smoking is harmful to your health. I was talking with a brother right before church, and he talked about all of his family members died early in life, and he said, I'm blessed. I'm the only one left. But he said, I, never, I didn't smoke, and I didn't drink, just didn't like it, didn't go that route. He said, the greatest thing I had was an anger issue. But he said, when I received the Holy Ghost, God turned me around, and people knew something had changed in me because I have received the Holy Ghost. But you see, the point was others died because they destroyed the temple of the Holy Ghost. Many health problems. And let me just say this. It is no greater a sin for there to be, and this is where it's fixing to make me uncomfortable, and it's going to make some of you uncomfortable, and you're not going to like it any better than I like it. I'm preaching to myself right now. But there is no greater sin uh, in smoking and than there is in overeating. It's destructive of the body. What we put in the body has a thing. Man, pastor is digging deep tonight, isn't he? Amen. Amen. 
Amen. But I'm attacking something. I'm going after something. And the purpose and the cause is of doubts that come. And let me just tell you this. If you start having doubts about your salvation experience and what you're living, I want to ask you this. Take and examine who you've been hanging out with a lot lately and what you've been reading and what you've been watching. If you'll start paying attention to what is what you're running with, I, I've, I've got in my closet a whole bunch of Harley Davidson shirts that I've collected from all over the United States, never been worn. I used to ride a Harley. And uh, I, I just going to tell you guys, there's a spirit that goes with it. If you, if you allow it, you embrace it. Now, if you, you ride a gold wing, you're sanctified and holy. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, there's something to be said about who you associate with. I happen to like boots and hats. I like, I like, when I was younger, I always wore a cowboy hat. I always wore one. From the time I was young, our church had a hat rack in the back, and every man in the church wore a cowboy hat, but it was the ranching country. And uh, it was a way of life. That was the way of life. Boots, jeans, and a cowboy hat. You could wear jeans and a, and a pressed white shirt, and you were dressed up, ready for church. And my mother didn't think so. My mother felt that I should wear slacks and, and I should wear shoes. And she worked on me with that. But you see, what I was around all the time influences me. And so it does with you as well. And without fail... Mark down what I'm telling you right now. If you've got a lot of darts of doubt starting to come up in your mind, is it really wrong as a lady if I trim my hair or if I wear makeup or if I, and we can go down the list of brethren as well. We can, we can, we can gain name off everything. I didn't come to name everything tonight. But when you start getting into that game, I want you to go back to where you made a commitment to God and what brought a conviction to you and find out what has changed that's caused you to start questioning the modesty and the holiness issue and what's caused you to question whether or not it really takes the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name baptism. You see, you will experience doubt and you're going to wrestle with those things, but you are... It is there for your purpose of developing you. And until you bring your will into submission with God's will, you will struggle with it. You will wrestle with it. You will battle with it. You will be forced into this wrestling match. And you're going to have to come to grips with it. There is a disparity between what the Bible teaches and what most of Christianity does. I'm just going to tell you there's a big difference. There are some huge, huge churches, what they call the super churches, that are filled with thousands, 30, 40,000 fill those buildings. But you're hard-pressed to ever hear anything corrected from the Word of God about how we are to separate ourselves from the world to draw nigh unto God. And I'm just telling you tonight that modern-day Christianity and true Bible salvation, there is a great chasm between the two. Amen. It, it, it is perfectly acceptable for you to spend days with your Bible open, wrestling with God for an answer. Isaiah 1 and 18 says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Amen. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. This is the word of God. There is a great difference between doubting and being rebellious. It's not wrong to have doubts, but rebellion is as of the sin of witchcraft. When John was put into prison, and we read this tonight, his faith was shaken so deeply that he even wondered about his own purpose as the forerunner of the Messiah. In Matthew 11 and 3, I read to you tonight, he said, Are you 
the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? So I introduce to you now the one that is called Doubting John. We don't talk about him. We talk about Doubting Thomas. In fact, we're in the season to talk about Doubting Thomas coming here real quickly in the next two weeks, the Easter time, and after Jesus comes back. And Thomas, he came and he had a revelation of who he was. We hear about him, but we don't hear much said about John and his doubts. But the scripture in this passage that I've read to you, we see the humanity of John. He spoke with authority and he saw people responding unto his message, but suddenly it all came to a halt because John is now thrown into prison. Why am I in this place? What I have preached and what I have done as a forerunner for Jesus Christ has ended me up right here. I was talking with a man of God the other day who lost his wife during the COVID time. And he mentioned this, and he's got a lot of issues going on in the church that he pastors. And he said, you know, I don't understand, Brother Stanton. He said, I've given my life all of these years to this and, and worked diligently and, and everything. And he said, why is everything in my life falling apart right now? I've lost the love of my life and and my church is literally seem like flying apart. And I wonder if there'll even be anybody come to hear me preach this coming Sunday when not long ago the building would be full. And he said, I don't know, Brother Stanton. I'm wondering about it. Well, I heard John in prison talking right then. I heard John who had been devoted. Amen. Now all of a sudden there is the questioning. He, he begins to wonder is it really worth it all what I have preached and what I've been doing? Is it really for real? And, and for the first time, he experiences the doubts. I also preached to you some time ago, and I remember the message and the passage that came into my heart where a Habakkuk, he man spoke in Habakkuk 1 and, and verses 2 and 3 and several passages jumping down through there, and he said this, he said, how long, Lord, must I call for help? And you do not listen or cry out to you. Violence, but you do not save. Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing, Lord? Are, are you really everlasting? My God, my God, my Holy One, you will never die. You, Lord, have appointed them to execute judgment. You, my rock have ordained them to punish. Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrongdoing. Why then, Lord, do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent while the wicked swallow up the, those more righteous than themselves? I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look and see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. You see, Habakkuk came to a point of questioning also. So what I'm speaking to you tonight, I'm speaking to you that it is normal for humanity to come to times of questioning of why these things are going on in their faith. As you grow older and you mature in your faith, you're going to see things that don't make sense. When you were young in the Lord, you were oblivious to all of that because you were so focused on Him. But now you've grown older and life is, is nasty. Life is, is nasty. It has ways of creating problems for you that, that you don't know how to explain. That's life. It gets messy. And I hear the great psalmist Asaph as he says, Truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. And verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. 
If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me, he said, until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I understood their end. And my brother and sister, we also are in a day and if you don't think it's not affecting the church right now, amen, you got your head in the sand. There are those that you seen just a few years ago that looked like they had a faith that was so strong and steadfast and well built on a firm foundation and degrees of understanding from the Word of God that are not even close to the truth of the Word of God today. Amen. And if you as a child of God are seeking to live for Him, guess what? It causes the darts of question and doubts to strike home into your heart and it'll cause the most righteous one to cry out like Asaph did, amen, and say, my feet have almost slipped, amen, but I remind you tonight, there's another day coming, child of God, amen, come on, hang on, I'm telling you there's another day coming, just as he said, hallelujah, when I understood their end, I am thankful that I find myself still in the house of God. Hallelujah. Blessed assurance, an old song says, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Blessed assurance. Yes, you're going to have trials. You're going to have tests. You're going to have offenses. Offenses will come. Brothers and sisters, I want to warn you. I taught last fall, back at the end of the year, if you remember, every Wednesday night I talked to you about the bait of Satan and I dwelt on it. Ten lessons I taught on it on Wednesday nights. And you know, you would think that, wow, we would grow by that and be aware of it. But I have to tell you, amen, with a regret in my heart that there are those that are affected right now by the spirit of offense because of something. We're living in a world right now that is so filled with selfishness and it's all about me and what I feel and my offense and they said this to me and they didn't do that and they, they, they didn't smile at me the right way and you know and, and all of a sudden we're offended. Can I tell you right now offenses are going to come. Come on get your eyes back on Jesus. Hallelujah. Get your eyes back on him. There are going to come times when you're going to be tested to the very core of your experience with God. You're going to question, is God really real? You're going to question, why I cannot see God doing anything? And, and does He even know that I exist? Does He know where I'm at right now? There, all of these rules and restrictions, are they really necessary? After all, there's millions in the world that see things different. They have their own Bible. They have their differing faith. And, and you know, let's just live and let live and get along. And, and this has been going on for generations, brothers and sisters. Amen. John wanted to believe, and he felt like he did believe, but he was tormented and nagged with the doubt that came into his mind. And so he blurts it out and says, Are you the one who was to come? Or do I expect someone else to come? Amen. Was that Holy Ghost experience at the altar and the baptism in Jesus' name, that warm, hot feeling that came on me, was that real? Or do I look for something else? Well, I want to tell you tonight, yes, it's real. It's real. I know it's real. This Pentecostal blessing, I know, I know, I know it's real. Hallelujah. It would be so wonderful if we could live in a world where doubt was impossible. But if we lived in a world without doubt, we would also live in a world without faith. 
And so in order for me to have faith, I must also have doubts. For only when I work through my doubts in the scripture and in prayer is my faith strengthened so that I grow and know the Lord. I want to take a big time out long enough to say to every one of these precious elder saints that is in this house tonight, I love you. I respect you. I thank God for you because you've gone down the trail of many trials and tribulations and you stay faithful to the house of God as you were taught by a man of God many years gone by I want to tell you tonight it is my intention praise God I was taught these things they were ingrained in my heart and yes I've dealt with my own battles of doubt and wonder is it really worth it amen do I keep on preaching nobody seems to be listening amen they walk away with little or no warning and I'm made to feel like that my burden for them amen it's just trivial it means nothing and they take a family and walk away and I'm left with the questions and the feelings of rejection and I hear John screaming out right now are you the one who was to come or do I look for somebody else praise God I know that you have questions also for the Lord spoke this into my spirit John questioned his own purpose while still in prison are you the one all believers sooner or later walk with God and come Come to a point of sandbars and obstructions that are in the way. But what we need in that time is what came to John also. And if you read the word, Jesus replies back. And that's what we need tonight, brothers and sisters, is we need to hear a fresh word from the Lord right now. Amen. We need to hear the voice and the word of the Lord speak into our spirit. Amen. Jesus said I want you to go back to John and, and I want you to tell John what you've seen and, amen the blind received their sight and the lame are walking and, and those who had leprosy are cleansed uh, sometimes we just need to hear amen the mouth of God speak it to us again come on John I know you're weary amen I know you have doubts uh, but come on I still hear it uh, the lame are walking the blind are receiving their side and the lepers are cleansed. Praise God. How many times have you come to church and the preacher has preached a message and you sat there in shock and awe because what he preached was exactly what you've been dealing with that day and you wonder how did that happen? I'll tell you how it happened. It's the voice of God giving you the message, John, to tell you that I'm still on the throne. I'm still performing miracles. I have not changed. I'm still the same God today that I was yesterday. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, would you praise the Lord again right now? Praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God. We need to remember what Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 35 and 3. Strengthen those who have tired hands. Encourage those who have weak knees. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear, for your God is coming to destroy your enemies. He is coming to save you. Oh, hallelujah. That enemy that's rising up against you, amen, God is coming to save you. Amen. Faith comes, how? By the hearing of the word of God. And so the word is going forth tonight. The lame is walking and the deaf is hearing. Upon hearing that report, it's likely that John remembered the words of Isaiah in Isaiah 35 and 5 where he said, Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Praise God. Each positive report strengthened his confidence in the Lord. So I ask you again, who are you hanging out with? And who are you giving your ear to? Amen. If you're looking at things on social media that all they can do is find the negatives and, and the bad things about, amen, everything that's gone wrong in a church somewhere, it's going to begin to affect you and it will drag you down. But I remind you the lepers were cleansed, the dead were raised. 
the poor had the gospel preached to them. And somehow, amen, the prison didn't quite have enough strength to hold them. It only could hold them for a short time. Praise God. I'm telling you, God's coming to deliver you. He's coming to pull you out of your doubt and set you back in faith right now. If you believe it, why don't you give a praise unto the Lord again right now? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Glory to God. So, doubting John, doubting John, he had a time in the prison, and he was there, and and he was wondering, is it really worth it all? But he received the strong assurance that came to him from the hearing of the Word of God. This is why that oftentimes when I speak to the young people and you hear me preach it, and I talk to you about five things that will make you strong, when somebody is weak and they start telling me they want to quit and they want to give up, I bring out these five things and I ask them, amen, to examine and tell me what areas are you weak in? What areas have you not been fulfilling? What about your prayer life? When's the last time you was in the prayer room and you prayed until you prayed through? Amen. What about the reading of the Word of God? When's the last time you really just sat down and you read the Word and allowed the Word to speak to you? Amen. What about your giving, your tithes, and your offerings? Amen. Amen. These top three things right there. Amen. If you fail in any one of those three things, I can tell you also automatically, I don't even have to know anything more. I know there is a spiritual weakness there. And without fail, when people come to me and they're questioning their faith and they're talking about leaving the church, I ask those top three questions of five that I go through. And in every case, they always are failing on those top three questions. They're not going to the prayer room. They're not reading the Word of God, let alone with husband and wife praying and reading the Word of God together. Woo! I'm preaching right now. I'm preaching right now. Hallelujah. Do you want to be saved or not? If you want to be saved, you've got to have a shepherd, amen, that will preach to you and can speak to you. Praise God. I mean, just tell you right now, as long as you're agreeing with me, it's all good. But you'll know when you're under submission. And that's when I preach to you and ask you to do something you don't agree with and you don't like. You'll know then whether you're under submission or not. Submission is not submission until you're asked to do something that you don't want to do. And then you find out if you're submitted unto the man of God that's been placed in your life. This is one of the areas of issue today. Nobody wants to have anybody speaking into their life. If I cannot speak clearly to you, even sometimes if it is offensive, I can't be your pastor. I can't take you to heaven. Amen. You just got a preacher. And I'll preach something that you like every now and then, but I promise you, if I'm your pastor, there's going to be from time to time, like tonight, it's not always going to be everything you wanted to hear. Amen. So I ask the question, who is the man of God in your life? Amen. If it's, if it's uh, smiling Bill or John or, or whoever on the internet, you know, it's amazing how many people will attend something on the streaming, but they won't go to the house of God. Amen. I'll leave that alone. I'll just, I'll just tell you. Doubt in John. Now he's come to a place he's been assured that the Lord is going to defeat the enemies. But now I want you to notice the Lord knew everything about John's doubts. In the prison, John asked, Are you he or do I look for another? Jesus knew all of that. And the devil will beat you up because you've been doubting and because you've had questions in your heart that you're afraid to ask. Because you can't get an answer for it. You're afraid nobody will understand you when you ask those questions. And so you brew on it. You stay in your prison. And you brew on it. 
And you should pray over it. You should read the Word of God over it. Ask God for a direction. Jesus knew about John's question. But I want you to take notice in Matthew 11, 7 through 11, what Jesus spoke unto the people. And he said this, What did you go into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind. If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Truly, listen to what Jesus said about John now. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Here is the one that questioned his Whether or not God was real, is Jesus the Messiah or not? He questioned all that. And look how rewarding it is now. The Lord begins to bring commending words about John. Even with his doubts, Jesus commended him. The ultimate commendation will come from God. And that will be what we read in Matthew 25 and 21. When we hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. John was the greatest and the least. There is nothing wrong with questioning God if it's with an honest heart seeking an honest answer. That includes wrestling with God before an open Bible. As we struggle with things in the flesh, there is nothing wrong with taking the Bible and laying it down before God. Amen. And asking the questions that we have and ask God to take you out of the valley of doubt and the battle that you're fighting to give you victory, to win over, to be victorious and to be able to lead others in the pathway of righteousness. I suspect that we will all struggle before God with questions until we die. I know that I'm 68 years old, and I still have questions that I don't have the answers for. When I was 25, I had all the answers. Amen. Today, I have all the questions and no answers. Amen. That's an age thing. Listen to Habakkuk 3 and 17. The word says, and I'm closing, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Stand with me right now. Amen. I'm asking everyone that is physically able, you can do so. I want you to come and stand across the front here. Amen. If you want to stand, husband and wife, that's fine. Or if you're apart on different sides, that's fine as well. But I'm asking everybody to come down to this altar tonight. Amen. Across the front here. I have one final passage and one request that I'm going to ask of everyone as you come down here tonight. I don't know all and who I may be speaking to tonight, but I know by what I feel in my own spirit and the way the Lord dealt with me during the night last night. I feel like I'm right on time and on target. Praise God. Our world is riddled right now with so many questionable things. When you look at our government, You can't trust in anything there on any side of the political aisle. There's nothing we can trust in there. When you look to churches of all varied faiths, it don't make no difference if it's the UPCI or the Catholic Church. We all have got our issues. Things that, if you allow it, It'll bring doubts and cause you to have struggles in your faith. 
But I close with Luke 22 and 31 where the Lord said this, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, not a conversion like salvation, but converted from your doubt unto faith. Strengthen thy brother. That's the word of God. I'm asking everybody right now, I want you to walk to somebody around you. And I want you to lay hands upon their shoulder. And I want you to pray the Lord's Prayer for a brother, a sister, I want you to pray, I want you to say, I am praying for you that your faith fail not. Don't say that it's not going to happen to you because we have watched others that were very strong that have fallen, men of God, saints of God. But I feel the Lord's prayer for every one of us tonight. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he might sift you, that he might separate you. But I've prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Brother, I'm praying for you that your faith doesn't fail. I'm praying for you, sister, that your faith doesn't fail. I'm praying for you right now, gentlemen. I'm praying for you right now, ladies. I'm praying for you that your faith fail not. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, the hundreds of men of God that are weary tonight, that are ready to give up, to give in, to back out. I'm praying for my brethren right now. Convert them, Lord, from their doubts and to their faith. I pray for this church tonight that you would bring a conversion of doubt to, to faith right now. To every man, to every woman, to every young woman. Amen. Lord, I pray that you would shield our eyes and that you would protect our hearing and that you would strengthen our walk with you, O oh God, that you would heal and bring healing to the lame man or woman. Amen. That you would give strength to the word of the Lord through our lips. I am praying for you that your faith fail not right now. I pray right now, saint of God, that you would pray in the Holy Ghost for a brother or a sister. You don't know the battle that they're dealing with right now. You don't know what doubts have been coming into their mind. Pray for them right now that the work of the Holy Ghost would bring a conversion of faith right now. Take us from doubt and take us, Lord, to the place Amen of faith, I ask in the name of Jesus, God. I know the confirmation you gave me today, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Today, I went for a quick lunch, gone there, planned to meet another brother there. And when I walked in, I got there early. When I walked in, there sat a pastor and his wife. When I walked in, they didn't see me. I walked in and I got by them and it dawned on me who I was seeing. When got my table and sat there for a moment and it really began to settle in on me that what I seen on the faces of these two precious servants of the Lord was weariness. Just wore out, tired. I got back up and I walked around back over there to them and no way they know what God's been dealing with me on. But as I ask, how are you doing? Both of them readily confessed. Brother Stanton, we're so tired. We're so weary. We just feel like we're not doing anything at all for the cause of the kingdom of God. All we're doing is just propping up 
a few people, they never seem to grow or overcome. And truthfully, Pastor, they're tired also. And I'm not doing any good to build them up. I think it's just time for me to just kind of back away and let somebody else take it over. Knowing what I felt here, I said, oh God, I told them just briefly, I said, I feel right now the Lord standing here at this table, not because I'm here, but I quoted that again. Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to destroy you, to sift you like wheat. Amen. The scripture talks that in the last days that this would be what would happen. There would be the weariness that would come upon the body of Christ and people would become tired They'd be worn out, if possible. The very elect, he's going to have to shorten the days because if he doesn't, the very elect won't even be saved. Brothers and sisters, you may think I'm beating a dead horse tonight, but I'm right on target. Amen. He said, well, Brother Stanton, I just want to leave church and just feel like giggling and being happy. I wish that I could preach that message for you tonight. But I have to warn you that Simon, Simon, Satan is desiring to do a sifting. Amen. Trust the man of God in your life right now and draw nigh unto God. He said, if you will draw nigh unto me, I will draw nigh unto you. Hallelujah. Anybody want to get closer to God right now? Amen. Amen. I know you're weary, saint of God. I know you're tired, and I know you've been hammered, amen, with questions. Is it really worth it all? But I'm preaching to you tonight, amen, the Lord is going to come shortly. He's going to defeat that enemy that's been coming against you, the stress-related problems that are plaguing your mind and your heart and your spirit. He's going to defeat it, and you're going to hear him say, well done. And I don't believe it's going to be many days from now that the coming of the Lord is nigh upon us right now lift your hands again unto the Lord tonight hallelujah come on let your doubts turn into faith right now amen Lord I speak it by faith in the name of Jesus Lord for doubts to be destroyed doubts to be destroyed and faith to be resurrected and lifted up now in the mighty name of Jesus Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Just because you can, throw your hands up again and let God hear your voice. Amen. Why don't you give the Lord your assurance? Father, I'm going to keep walking in the path that you have given to me. I'm going to stay true unto the calling. You called me out of a world of sin and you established me in the pathway of righteousness. I'm going to stand steadfast and true in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I cannot encourage you enough to encourage one another Number one, by your prayers for one another. But encourage one another with words of encouragement. A phone call from time to time. Brother, just wanted you to know I prayed for you today. Sister, just wanted you to know I was thinking about you and I prayed for you today. How's it going? You're going to have a better day today. God's going to help you through this day. Brother Cooley said he had a rough day today. Well, I did too, brother. Amen. I join with you on it. It's been one of those days when you get news that you just wish you didn't get. But it it comes. That's life. Life is messy. Amen. But when we come in the house of God, it begins to lift one another up and encourage one another. Amen. Don't just rush out of here, but greet one another in the name of the Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday. Going to be a great day, brother. All Britain will be speaking to us, and I believe he's going to have an anointed word for us.